Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're looking at the frequency function. I've got a little table of transactions here. It tells me transaction ID, the fruit bought, and the number of fruit fruits purchased. Now, what I want to do is kind of analyze the frequency of people purchasing a certain number of items. So I want to know um, how many times people buy one or two items, how many times people buy three, four or five items, or six, seven, eight, nine or ten items. Okay, so the frequency function will allow us to do this. I've set out my little uh, ranges here. Uh, one and two, three, four and five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So these are my ranges, up to two, up to five, uh, sorry, three, four and five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten, over ten. So, let's see how it actually works. What I'm going to do, this is an array formula. The frequency function is an array formula. So, to use an array formula in this context, what I'm going to do is select all the cells I want my answers in. I'm actually going to select down to one cell more than this last range here. That will mean that it will tell me how many times someone bought more than 10 items. So, here we go, frequency. So it's got two arguments, data array and bins array. Data array, this is the range of cells that I want to uh, analyze in terms of frequency. So control shift down arrow key, that'll select down to there. I don't have to fix this or anything. It'll automatically copy down in an array formula. No need for the dollar signs. Now bins array, basically that's asking for the ranges that you're looking for. And I've already explained this over here. This is, in fact, our bins over here. So I'm going to select those cells there, close the bracket, and Control shift enter rather than enter Remember, when you're using an array formula, you need to do Control shift and enter And there we are. So let's just see if that is right. If I did a little bit of sorting here. So uh, one and twos, one, two, three, four, five. That seems to have worked. And then um, three to five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seems to have worked. And we'll just trust the fact that that 11 is correct. If I change one of these numbers to 11, pops up there because that's over 10. That last bin um, means that this cell, uh, basically, it will allow for an over 10 uh, frequency count. Okay, now um, the other thing you can do is kind of indicate the number of unique items in this list. So I'm just going to put the transactions back to uh, alphabetical order there. Uh, what I want to know is how many times uh, a 1 appears, how many times a 7 appears, how many times an 8 appears in this list. Now we can do this using the frequency function. Now what we would do is we'd say our data array is this same range, but also our bins array is the same range. Bins array is the same range. Now I forgot to do the obvious. I didn't select my column of cells that I want the uh, array formula to appear in. So I'll do that again frequency. So data array is that range of cells and bins array, control shift and enter, is the same set of cells. So I'm going to close the bracket, control shift enter and there we are. So what this is telling us is that one appears once in this column and you can see that that is true. Seven appears twice. So is that true? Once, twice. But notice the other seven gets a zero to tell us that, that it is a duplicate. Wherever you see it as zero, you know it's a duplicate. So apparently there are five eights. So one, two. So the second one gets a zero. Three. Four. I must have missed one. So one, two, three, four, five. So you can see it's counting the um, number of times a particular value appears. Now we could then work out 
the number of unique values in this particular column. Uh, if we did, um, for example, a count ifs, and all we'd need to do is count in this column the number of items that are greater than, greater than, if I could get that right, greater than zero. If you can see that little formula. In this range, the number of items that are greater than zero, and it gives me a 10. So there are 10 unique numbers in this column. If I just type another one in, uh, I'd get 11, 11 unique values in this column. Now that's one way of working out the number of unique values. Uh, there is another way. Let's just try this. So if I was to do the same formula over here where I basically want to find out the number of unique values in this column. Now, so what I've done is I've said my data array is the same as my bin array, and that's not a useful answer at the moment, but if we can just see what Excel is doing with this formula, and what I'm going to do is select that, and I'm going to do F9 on my keyboard, and you can see the array that's been created is exactly the same as this, these answers in this column here, but expressed as an array. So I'm just going to control Z to get out of that. Now basically what I want to do is to only sum up the ones or only count the ones that are greater than zero. So if I put greater than zero there and then did the same F9 trick, we should see that they're all converted to true and falses. Now what I want to do is I really want the trues to be ones and the falses to be zeros. So then I can sum up the ones to find out the number of unique values. Now, there's a number of ways of doing this, but uh, the way I'm going to use is to use the integer function. And you'll see that when I use the integer function, that what it does is convert my trues to ones and my falses to zero. So, in fact, all I need to do is sum up those ones. Sum up those ones. If I can get back to where I was. And, in fact, I've lost it. No, there it is. So, let's just do that last bit again. So, good reminder for you. So, it was greater than zero. And... If I look at what it's producing then with my F9, I get my trues and falses. And then what I wanted to do is convert those trues and falses to ones and zeros. So I'm using the integer function for that. So if I do my F9 for that, you should see I get my ones and zeros make sure I undo it this time. And then all I want need to do is sum up those ones and zeros. And I get 11. Now I didn't actually and I, uh, have to use an array formula, control shift enter to um, get the correct answer there. But you can see it's 11 there. If I put in a different number there, say 23, that would increase to 12 and so does that. So that may be useful, finding the number of unique values. You could either do it by in two stages uh, and then using a count ifs, normal frequency function, then use a count ifs. Or there is a little way of doing it here by nesting frequency within uh, the integer function and then within the sum function. Okay, so a little introduction for you uh, for the frequency function in Excel. It's just a tablet at Blue Peak and Computer Training. Hopefully that's been helpful.